Kia ora and welcome to Ritaha. I'm here with Rodney Bell, one of the original Hotipua toy. Ah, indeed, kia ora. Hey, look, there's a lot coming at you for Ritaha. It's a whole range of activities, art, installation, dance, film, movement. In fact, let's go check out one of those installations right now. Let's go. Hey, kick one here. Haramai. Haramai, haramai. 25 years. Tiro here.
Get up early. Exercise drills. Exercise drills. Just get on with it. Exercise drills. Just get on with it. Don't complain. Exercise drills. Just get on with it. Shake a leg. Just get on with it. Exercise drills. Good for you! I am a dog made of China. I had it for 
35 years. I got the dog when I was seven in 1978. I love that dog because it was given to me by some very special people. Mr. and Mrs. Jones took me into their home when I was two. They taught me to read and write. Learning to read and write changed my life because it meant I could communicate with people. To me at an early age, I didn't really understand why I can't speak. I guess people thought I was too young to understand about having a disability. But still I was a happy kid playing as kids do. At times I was in a world of my own, a safe one. I kept the cool people out. The Joneses as teachers became smitten with me when they saw me playing on my own. They showed love and thanks to them I had a second chance to be in a family. I am grateful. Without doubt having the ability to communicate, to get words out, has changed my life completely. <laughs>
So good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'll uh, kick us off with a formal beginning. Tuia kitarangi, tuia kitafinua, tuia kitanako na tangata. Ko te minui, ko te aroha, tihe maudiora. Write it in the sky, write it in the land, write it in the hearts of all people. There is one important thing, and that is love. In Amanuhiri Kikone, to those of you here, in Amanuhiri, Mataatata, those that are joining us through the video screens, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Koto Katoa. Welcome, folks, to the 25th anniversary. Whakanui o te rua te kaumārima o Touch Compass, the 25th anniversary of Touch Compass. Tonight, we've got a really jam-packed show. We've got lots of activities, as you've seen, installations here, performances on stage and more. But really, we don't have 25 years without our foundation stone. So right now, I'd love to acknowledge the wonderful Catherine Chappelle, who started this who got this rolling, whose blood, sweat, toil, and tears created this amazing organization that looks to do so much to make a real and tangible difference. Appropriate, an organization called Touch Compass makes a tangible difference in the lives of our Hotipu Atoi, our extraordinary disabled artists. Speaking of extraordinary disabled artists, I'd love now to welcome to the stage the one and only, our artistic direction panel, Suzanne Cowan, Rodney Bell, and Lucy Favor to share some of their own thoughts on their journey, their 25 year history, and what the future holds for Touch Compass now. Kia ora. A rangatira JT, a moto manaki, a moto karakia hoki ki tenei pō. Nō reira, e mokopunu a hau, a ki nga te manja poto, a e tainui te waka, nga te rōra te hapu, a, a manga hokewa te awa, a motaki ora te maunga, te toko ngā nui anō, te whare tūpuna. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. <laughs> Ko Rodney Bell taku ingoa. My name is Rodney Bell, and hey, we all long to live for a purpose and to be respected in our lives, and here we are feeling that right now as we sit here as ADP for Touch Compass Dance Trust. Uh, it's been 25 years <clears throat> of celebrating uh, movement of, of our vessels, and as I acquired my new vessel 30 years ago, my new lens on life, I feel blessed to be uh, channeling that energy of dance through, through me, and like JT said, from the beautiful lady, Catherine Chappelle, who planted the seed of dance in my soul. But now, through this lived experience, I feel it's very important as an ADP, but also as a company, to pass that seed on, to like educate our rangatahi, especially our hautipua toi rangatahi, our disabled, our extraordinary disabled uh, children artists. Our, our extraordinary rangatahi. So we pass the seed on to them. So I'm very excited about developing and exploring new ways that Touch Compass Dance Trust can pass that seed on. And hey, we have Izzy, we have JT, we have Zan in the house, and, and through our, all our collective consciousness, watch out. So Norada, thank you for being here tonight. And hey, let's share there in a minute. Kia ora. I'd like to introduce you to the Queen of Samoa, and she uh, has, has taken time to come and spend time with, with us tonight, but hey, this is my beautiful sister. We were uh, founding dancers for Touch Compass Dance Trust 25 years ago, or 27, or something like that, but no data, Susie Faiva. Tilova Lava, Tina Kautau Katoa. Welcome to our 25th anniversary celebration of Touch Compass. As we climbed up the 20 flights of stairs to the studio on High Street in the city, we were rehearsing for our first dance show ever, Touch Compass, in October 1997. There were Jesse Johnston, Rodney Bell, Suzanne Bentley, Kiki Brown, Sumara Fraser and myself. 
We had to carry wheelchairs and power chair batteries on our backs so it was a challenging time to discover things like accessibility is not always easy. Touch Compass's influences over the years as we did so good for our community and the audience that we brought awareness of our own unique ways to achieve our creativity in the disability community. Touch Compass was established with the legacy of a professional team and especially with Manor and big thanks for Catherine Chappell direction of putting Touch Compass on the world stage and in here, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Farfate. Thank you. Kia ora, Lucy. Hi, my name's Suzanne. I've been involved with the company for about 20 years now. And it feels like a real privilege to be here tonight with you as one of the few live events that's happening in Aotearoa at the moment. So, um, and I think also it's testimony to the company's uh, persistence over the years as well to put the show on. And that's what it took to get this to this milestone of 25 years. I think what's exciting about this moment too is that it signals a shift in the pointing of the companies towards a disability-led artistic direction panel uh, with my dear friends here, Rodney and Lucy. Um, and what this means is a bringing a new disability consciousness to the work. Uh, and so we see this reflected in the first piece that we're going to be watching, Wai Rua, Two Waters. So that stream of consciousness is underpinning this piece. And the piece also represents disability values of rest and restoration. I'm sure we can all relate to that. Um, and so with this piece, uh, we have nine dancers and uh, it's choreographed in a sort of pandemic style. So we had each dancer craft their own improvisation uh, at home uh, by themselves. And then we brought three of the dancers to the stage uh, that's uh, Duncan, Sierra, and Julie. Um, and we have six dancers who are virtual. And some of these dancers include founding members, Suzanne Bentley and Samara Fraser. Um, and they're streaming in, well, actually it's pre-recorded, but they're streaming in from places like Belgium and Wellington. And we also have some new faces. We have the wonderful Jenny Newstead, from Christchurch, uh, and we also have Laura Stewart uh, performing from Wellington. And it's gonna be a very exciting piece. So thank you so much for coming. Um, it took a lot of courage to come out in these pandemic conditions, and uh, I just want you to relax and enjoy the show.
Oh, kia ora I hope you'll enjoy, uh, you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, Wairua, a convergence of two rivers, um, a convergence of two streams of consciousness. And really, when we talk of convergence, Ritaha doesn't happen without the convergence of a lot of great minds, a lot of great hearts, a lot of great artists. Um, I'd like to take this time right now to acknowledge the power and the presence and the purpose behind Ritaha that came from the vision of Pelena Kiki Brown. Pelena Kiki Brown served as our uh, interim artistic director and left us with this beautiful taonga, one, a really a mantle of care and nurture, right? Te kora wai o tātafai, the mantle of care and nurture that has been picked up by this artistic direction panel and have supported these beautiful artists. I can tell you the journey, the rivers of convergence that this group has been down um, since we envisaged putting on Ritaha back in July of 2021. So there's been a real journey for all of us. And again, this, this waka, this vessel that was initially given to us by Catherine Chappelle and supported by some fantastic people, including uh, the wonderful Karen Fraser Payne, who I took over from as uh, GM. This gift that they've given us, this opportunity to make a real difference here. Is, um, is a truly remarkable thing. Look, there's been a lot of people that have supported what goes on here. We're about to hear from two very special supporters of ours. Um, one, of course, Paula Tesoriero, the Disability Rights Commissioner. Um, she'll be showing her video from Wellington, um, which was recorded for us for this evening. She would have loved to have been here in person, but COVID compliance stepped in the way, and now she joins us from afar. Equally from afar, our Wellington-based chair, Guy Ryan, chair of Touch Compass, will also have a few words acknowledging some of those fantastic people who have helped the journey of Touch Compass and get us to where we are now, that we can look back on 25 years. Without further ado, here's Paula Tesoriero, and Guy Ryan, kia ora. A tēnā koutou kato, ko Paula Tesoriero tōko ingoa. Ko o te kaihutu, tika hoatanga, mō te kāhui, tika tarangata ki Aotearo. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. Thank you for inviting me to take part in the 25th anniversary celebrations for Touch Compass. Wow! to be celebrating 25 years of contribution to Aotearoa New Zealand's artistic and cultural environment is a feat of dedication, belief and passion for a vision that sees disability as a celebration of diversity. The fact that you've held true to this vision for a quarter of a century in a sector which has a number of challenges is awe-inspiring. It brings me great hope. I'm sure you've overcome many challenges in this time, but the last two years with COVID have brought some particular challenges for the sector. So I commend you all, organisers, artists, Fano and family, for your determination to celebrate what you've all achieved, not just for the community, not just for the disability community, but for all of Aotearoa. As we transition to managing COVID and opening our borders, the challenges will change. But I'm sure Touch Compass will adapt and continue to thrive. It's so important for arts companies like yours to flourish. Because you're pushing boundaries and breaching barriers faced by disabled people, and in doing so challenging perceptions about what we can, can't, or shouldn't do. Touch Compass is forging a bright path to others to follow. But its very existence, it has said boldly, we're here, we're visible, we're creative, we contribute, we have a voice and a view worth watching and listening to. You, all those who work in Touch Compass and all those artists who have performed through Touch Compass are proudly and rightfully demanding attention. This is your time. For disabled people, visibility is critical to being considered and included in society. For too long, too often, disabled people and disabled artists have not always been included. Touch Compass is challenging that narrative by showcasing the talent 
of disabled people that enriches and adds to a culturally enriched society. That Touch Compass can do this and embrace and celebrate Aotearoa's unique cultural context is another testament. Touch Compass is about celebration and inclusion and talent. You're a leader in the creative sector and I'm proud to have been invited to participate in these celebrations. It's a real shame I can't be with you in person, but I know tonight will be a great success and I look forward to being asked back in 25 years time to celebrate your 50th anniversary celebrations. I'd like to end by reciting your own words because they denote your kaupapa. We acknowledge the pathways and people that have led the company to where it is today. We acknowledge all dancers, choreographers, community workshop participants, support workers and all staff, past and present. He ah, he te mai nui o te o, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing in the world? It is people, it is people, it is people. Namahi nui ki e koutou katoa. Kia ora koutou, ko Guy Ryan tōku ingoa, he hiamana aho ki touch compass. Hi everyone, my name is Guy Ryan, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm the current chair of Touch Compass, and I'm a Touch Compass dancer from way back in the late 1990s. On behalf of the board, no mai haere mai, welcome to Ritaha. We're delighted that you've joined us to celebrate 25 years of Touch Compass. I want to acknowledge those of you who have had your work affected in various ways by COVID. First up, our hearts go out to you. It's a really difficult time for everyone in the arts right now, as, as many of you know. And with everything going on, we feel very, very privileged to be able to bring you this performance of Ritaha tonight. I'd like to acknowledge our artistic direction panel, Rodney Bell, Sue, Lucy Fiverr and Suzanne Cowan, and all of the artists involved tonight. Thank you for your creativity and direction in putting Ritaha together, and for your determination to make tonight happen in the face of many challenges. Your vision and mahi is an inspiration to all of us. Congratulations, have fun, we're with you all the way. A big thank you to our management and production team, John, Izzy, Zahn, and others who have worked hard to make tonight happen. Thank you for supporting our artists and for your unfaltering belief in what they do. Thank you also to Palana Kiki Brown, who served as our interim artistic director in from 2020 to early last year. Kiki played a key role in helping to develop our disability-led vision and kopapa and develop the original concept for Retire. Thank you, Kiki. Thank you also to my current and recent board members, Linda Parker Wendt. Anna Tapping and Romana Lang for all your mahi and support behind the scenes over the last two years. And finally, a big thank you to all the incredible people at our major funders, Creative New Zealand, Auckland Council, Auckland Live and Foundation North. Your invaluable support of Touch Compass over a long period of time is greatly appreciated and has been essential to ensuring we could actually go ahead tonight. So namahi nui ki akoto. So Touch Compass turns 25 this year. This is an amazing milestone to reach. And it's a great time to reflect both on our rich history and how this history will inform our future. An idea that is beautifully captured in the Fokotoki Kamua Kamuri, or walking backwards into the future. So I'd like to do that now for a little bit. Looking back, I can see that Touch Compass has a rich and diverse history that has touched many lives, including mine and many of yours. Many of you have had a long association with the company, and in some cases spanning back to childhood. And many people, from artists and directors to managers, administration and production staff, to board members, funders, crew, sponsors and other supporters, have worked incredibly hard to get us to where we are today. So thank you everyone. Look, there's too many people for me to acknowledge individually, but I do need to mention a few. First, I'd like to acknowledge Catherine Chappelle, the founder and longtime artistic director of Touch Compass. Kath founded Touch Compass in 1997 and led the company all the way through to early 2019. She has made a massive contribution to the arts in Aotearoa and led the company and her pioneering inclusive work with Touch Compass has paved the way for artists with and without disabilities. It's inspired and enabled careers, influenced other arts companies and audiences and ultimately fueled great changes in our wider performing arts landscape. So kamo to wehi Kath, a massive thank you to you on behalf of everyone that has been involved with Touch Compass 
for your vision, passion, drive and hard work over many, many years. You have created a rich legacy and set the scene for Touch Compass to have a very bright future. Next, I'd like to acknowledge Rodney, Lucy and Suzanne, all of whom been, have been with Touch Compass from the early days. Rodney, Lucy and uh, Suze, it was a great privilege and pleasure for me to perform with you back in those early days, those heady days of the late 90s. And it's been a great pleasure for, for me to see you step into leadership, artistic leadership roles with Touch Compass. And thank you for your massive dedication and commitment over a long period. You are true leaders and in many ways, the heart of Touch Compass. Namihi nui. There are so many others that are integral to the Touch Compass story and have made massive contributions over a long period. I can't, again, I can't mention everyone, so please forgive me in advance for those that I've missed out, but I would like to do a few shout outs. In no particular order, Jesse Johnson and Steele. Thank you, Jesse, for your massive contribution to Touch Compass. You were right there at the beginning with Kath in the first show and started many of our most memorable works over the years. I loved performing alongside you back in the day, even though I knew you would always steal the limelight. Your energy and enthusiasm and humour were infectious, and you've inspired many people over the years. Namahi nui e hoa. You're awesome. Uh, Alicia mclennan Mala, uh, more commonly known as Lish, thank you for your contribution to Touch Cambridge Lish. It's been inspiring to see your journey from a youth performer with the Flying Piglets under Linda all those years ago, all the way through to the great work you've done with us as an adult performer, teacher and administrator. So thank you, Lish. Karen Fraser Payne, thank you, Karen, for your work as General Manager of Touch Compass over a long period. You were instrumental in growing Touch Compass uh, into one of Aotearoa's leading performing arts companies alongside Kath and uh, created a fantastic legacy in the process. Sue Cheeseman, thank you, Sue, for all your teaching and community work over the years and for your wider support of Touch Compass. And to all Touch Compass dancers and tutors, past and present, too many of you to mention, but just a few from recent years, Duncan, Julie, Amelia, Helene, Samantha, Sierra, Georgie, Addis, Dan, Matt, and many others, thank you all for the energy and mahi you've put into Touch Compass over many years. A massive thank you to all the other, many other artists, choreographers and directors who have contributed to our work on and off stage over the years. And a massive thank you to all the managers, producers, crew, venues, funders, and other supporters that have supported our mahi and kept the wheels turning. Touch Compass has presented an incredibly diverse body of work on stage and screen over the last 25 years, and I think we should be all really proud of what's been achieved. Looking ahead, I see that Touch Compass has the power to really keep moving that dial on inclusion and diversity in Aotearoa to be a strong platform and voice for artists with disabilities and without disabilities, and to make an outsized impact ultimately on New Zealand society. It's a great uh, to have our new disability led and strategy in place, and it's fantastic to have a new artistic team, a new management team, and a new board to deliver on this. And the great thing about this new team is it's a great mix of people that have a long standing experience with Touch Compass, as well as new people that bring a fresh perspective. John, Rodney, Lucy, and Suzanne, You've done a great job of picking up the leadership of Touch Compass, steadying the waka and propelling us forward in a time of great change and uncertainty. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing what the whole team can accomplish together in the coming years. And to all Touch Compass whānau out there, namahi nui, thank you all so much for your energy, inspiration and support of this critical mahi over the years. We wouldn't be here without you. Enjoy the rest of Ritaha. Have a great night, everyone. Many thanks and greetings to you all. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Oh, kia ora, lovely words from both Paula and Guy, and um, goodness, that list of names. There have been some really wonderful hearts and minds that have given their best to Touch Compass, and one, of course, who you're going to see very shortly, who continues to give their best. Lucy Faiva started as a, as a youth performer with, with Touch Compass and now sits as one of our guiding lights, one of our artistic direction panel. She's joined here shortly by Pacific Dance and by two artists you've already seen this evening, Julie Van Rennen and Sierra De Prose. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up, Taupo.
So there you had it. That was Taupo, led by uh, the wonderful Lucy Favor. At this point, I'd love to do a quick shout out, if we can, to the team in Wellington of Everybody Cool Lives Here, who first worked with Lucy on the Taupo piece, gave a lot of support, both emotional, tangible and intangible. As we say, Touch Compass is about tangible and intangible impact. Uh, so I'd love to shout out to Nick and Rose. Thanks so much for all your wonderful support of Lucy in both her work past and present. And we look forward to working with you in future collaborations. As you saw there, one of the key things about, I guess, the new Touch Compass, or in many ways a continuation of Touch Compass, has been a culturally-led focus. Uh, we really honour our role as uh, ambassadors of Te Riti o Waitangi, the principles that are founded behind it. We love to celebrate Ngātoi Māori, we love to celebrate Ngātoi Samoa, uh, all, all the works that can be evolved within our Pacifica brethren. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek now into an idea. Lucy will begin a journey over the next three years leading a work called Ainga, focused on the Fa'a Samoa concept of family and Fano. Yes, it'll be a, uh, a Pacifica-led piece, but really the concept of family stretches across the entire Pacific. At Te Iwi o Te Moana Nui o Pacifica, right? Uh, all of there. We really look forward to working with Lucy. One of the aspects we'll be folding into that is the concept of crypt time, of allowing the time and space for a work to be able to be developed, conceived, researched, pulled together, so we're not going to rush to a finish line. This will be a three-year piece of work with incremental stages that Lucy gets to champion. She'll be working side by side with Pacifica directors, with Pacifica cast, with the Pacifica crew, and we've also envisaged a Pacifica rock band. So keep your eyes out for that work coming your way, and more will be shared as we go forward. So at this point now, we'd just like to say we're going to take a short intermission, both here and by Mata Ata Ata, across the, uh, the video divide. We'll come back in about 15 minutes with the rest of Ritaha. We're a moving art organisation. We aim to move you emotionally and physically, and very shortly we'll be moving physically all over this venue. Kia ora, I'll be back with you soon. title sequence appears and zooms in on the letter E. Amy Blinkhorn. Diversity exists in the multifaceted singular. A black line appears on a blank piece of paper. The line jumps, slides, falls and extends into a shadow. It 
climbs and loops around itself. The line gets thicker and thinner as it grows upwards. Short black lines repeat along the top of the page forming a bridge. Marks appear from the top of the page like pitter patters of rain gently filling the space. The Iwanga title sequence appears and zooms in on the letter I. AJ Fata, husk. An upside down coconut husk is turned over by two hands. Two husks appear. Hands fill one empty husk. Hands move the husks forward, backwards, left to right, over a geometric pattern of moving triangles. The hands disappear. The background disappears and the coconut husks multiply from two to four. The hands return to move the husks from each side of the screen into the geometric pattern. The image of the husks and hands are repeated and cut between movements in sync with the sound of the clap over the same moving image. The pattern expands and the hands move the husk away for the last time. The Iwanga title sequence appears and zooms in on the letter W. Grace Iwashita Taylor, Langi Malier. Langi Malier is a digital illustration with vibrant and contrasting colours and hand-drawn mark making. The lines move across, forwards, backwards and diagonally with the motifs repeated sometimes in time with the voice and sometimes in time with the breath. The lines grow, transforming into manu, figures and other marks. In the spiral there exists the locked jaw grind, the woman with no words but her entire body speaking so tense, so tense, so tense. even her bones hurt, grind, hold, grind, speak now, answer now, the pain she absorbed and the pain expelling all at once, once. Sally of memory exposed, no outers to massage her, flickers of cutted lights trick her vision, she can only now imagine, she silently tries to find her breath, 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 find her breath. <sighs> this usually takes three days. And when it's done, another skin discarded. Inhale, tasi, lua, tolu, fa, hold, tasi, lua, exhale, ono, lima, fa, tolu, lua, tasi. Expand the canal, always with water, salty and hot, heated by the breath of your ancestors. That is how deep the utu has been buried. Lift up the bones, ask them their story. Fish for the fihi, entanglement, tend to the sala, mala, harm, seek to vavete, unbind it, find the estranged weave in the fala, honor the decay, then clean the bones. Do not do this alone. Intergenerational healing starts with you, but it is a communal task. You were birthed from the blue amniotic fluid of an ancestor that is present, contemporary, unbound by ta, time. You are the va. Do not grieve for the ancestors you have not yet met. Their DNA is within you. Your atoms and cells match and house the residue of them. You are the ancestor you have been waiting for. So heal your own trauma in the present. And by default, this heals the trauma of them and your children breaking the cycle. Suffering is not a virtue. Be the va that reinstates a state of noa to your ngafa, restore langi malie, harmony, balance. This is our birthright. Inhale, tasi, lua, tolu, fa, hold, tasi, lua, exhale, onu, lima, fa, tolu, lua, tasi. 
the Iwanga title sequence appears and zooms in on the letter A. The Corny Cousin Papa's Retreat. The screen is a grid. A square to the left is illuminated, revealing leaves, orange fruit, and the shadow segment of an old clock. More squares slowly and randomly fill the screen, revealing more sections of the clock. Some of the squares are glitching in and out of time. The screen shudders. A square in the top right reveals a shadowed face holding a nipple or tea. A square in the middle shows blood dripping down a clock face. One by one, the squares change to reveal more blood dripping down the clock face. A figure appears reflected in the right side of the clock, wearing a white dress and wielding a nipple or tea. Squares flicker on and off randomly, shuddering and glitching. The screen turns black. A tree bearing orange fruit in a garden is revealed. It is daytime and a ghost-like figure in a white dress appears. Wind blows through the fabric of the dress. They are holding a nipple or tea in one hand and a book in the other. They lay the nipple or tea down on the ground in front of them. They pick up the book, open it to the middle and begin to write. The figure fades, leaving only the tree and the garden behind. Iwanga title sequence appears and zooms in on the letter E. Forest V Carpool Shadow Time. An eye blinks sleepily open. A grainy image of a house with a light on is revealed. The eye blinks closed. Come time. Time. Come break me. Break me. Open. Open like a bee friendly flower. The eye blinks sleepily open. A hand is reaching out and a translucent hand scrawls over the image. Open like something simple. Like something seen. The eye blinks sleepily open. A straw hat hangs on a white wall. Light streams in, casting shadows. The words, come, come, are scrawled over the image. The eye blinks closed. Come, time, time, come break me, break me open. Open like a bee, friendly flower. The eye blinks sleepily open. A black and white image shows part of an eye and the hand continues to draw across the image. The eye blinks closed more slowly. Open like something simple, like something seen. The eye blinks open. A photo from bed with a red duvet and the blinds half closed, looking into the corner. The hand continues to draw on the images. Come time, time, come break me, break me. Open, open, like a bee. The eye blinks open. A shadowed leg appears in a darkened doorway and the hand is still drawing. The eye blinks closed. Friendly flower. Open, like something simple. The eye opens widely to a foggy and faded view of a forest. Like something seen the eye blinks closed the iwanga title sequence appears and zooms in on the letter a tosiata avia epilepsy wa epilepsy wa Part 1. Deja Vu. Seen before. You know Deja Vu. You have been here before. As I say the words, you'll know them. 
as the light shines through the window, you will know the way it touches the girl's face. You will recognise the girl in the yellow dress. When she enters the room, you will know the next thing she says. In the exact way, her eyebrows will crumple as she frowns. You have been here before, and it is a small miracle. Part two, jamais vu, never seen. Here comes the matrix like a slow tsunami made of something thick, like porridge, sliding, sliding towards me. It fills my mouth, my arms and legs try to swim. Where is the lifeguard? Where is the lifeguard? My bedroom tilts like a titanic. What is this? This is not a bedroom. Where is this? The floor becomes the sea. Every time I go down fighting, but I go under. I go way, way under. When I return... I am still in the sea. No, this is not the sea. This is a pool of urine. I have swum through an underwater cave in a coral reef of the Red Sea. No, this is not a cave door in the coral reef. This is the Kmart changing room. It's okay, love. You've fallen through the door. Where's the lifeguard? Where's the lifeguard? I look up. A mermaid's hands cover me with seaweed. No, this is not seaweed. This is a green Kathmandu jacket. Don't worry, love. My husband has epilepsy too. I know what to do. But where is the lifeguard? I ask her, where am I and what is my name? Kia ora, and welcome back 
to Ritaha. I hope you enjoyed seeing Iwainga, a wonderful piece, a real digital expression of the disabled body form and thoughts. Uh, our next piece of work also encapsulates very much that kind of thing. We're moving now into one of our installation pieces. This is a physically moving piece of work. We'll start at one point and move until we finish at another. So follow us along. This work, Knotty Entities, is a wonderful expression of the extension of the human body, of the fact that we're connected to more than just ourselves. It's a way to express, it's a way to perform, and it's intrinsic to life. A wonderful collaboration piece built over nearly a decade between Suzanne Cowan and Amelia Rubio. So, follow me now as we welcome Naughty Entities.
And how am I? Fun, how am I? How am I? How am I? We're keeping you moving. We're ready to uh, begin shortly the final performance of the evening, the final uh, wonderful piece of work. Come along and come and join. How am I? How am I? Down here. Come and join us around this beautiful circle, this beautiful circle of light. So we hope you've enjoyed Ritaha to this point. We now reach the point that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I get to use a dad joke. I'm a dad. So here we reach the high point of the evening, literally. Uh, the wonderful Chloe Loftus and Rodney Bell will entertain us with a wonderful piece of work, the air between us, born out of the connection of two people from very different backgrounds, very different experiences, very different ways of navigating Te Ao, the world. But coming together here in this circle of light, suspended above us, two people become one in a harmonious performance. Look, without any further ado, let's let the work speak for itself. And now we introduce you to the air between us. Kia ora.
Oh, kia ora all, and that was the year between us. Look, that brings us to the end of our performance. Um, we hope you've really enjoyed Ritaha. We've really enjoyed bringing it to you. There's a lot of collaborators that you've seen and one that you've definitely heard this evening. I'd just like to single out the wonderful Lewis McKellum, providing live, mixed, on-the-spot music tonight. A fantastic musician and a great collaborator. And to acknowledge our wonderful artistic direction panel, Lucy Favor, Suzanne Cowan, and of course, who you just saw taking a breath now, <laughs> Rodney Bell. Thanks to Chloe and Tim for that beautiful and amazing work. Tim's going to need a good drink shortly. <laughs> Okay, so that brings us to the end. Look, just finally, we want to thank all of you out there, all of you who are able to join us, all of you in here who are able to join us on this beautiful Auckland evening. We'd love to thank Creative New Zealand, Auckland Council, Auckland Live, the fantastic technical team that brought Ritaha to you. Thank you. And to all the many collaborators that have helped us on this journey, Movement of the Human, Everybody Cool Lives Here, this wonderful team of people, uh, thanks so much for joining us. We're pleased we could bring Ritaha, 25 years of Touch Compass, to you. And we look forward to sharing more exciting and amazing live theatre, performance, dance, installations, film, theatre, and creative expression for the years to come. No my heart of my, thank you so much. Kia ora.